Mondays are always the worst day of the week, but we want to change that. If you're like us and love hearing big buck stories, then tune in every Monday because we're going to bring you Muley Story Monday. So sit back, relax, and let's start making Monday just a little bit better. All right, today we're here with Ned Heaton. He's actually my uncle, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his Ponsagon buck he got just this last year. So kind of just tell us this story, tell us about how you felt when you drew the tag. And... All right, well, I ended up, I put in for the premium tag and I didn't even really know what I was doing. I was just putting it in and I only had three or four points and I put in and ended up drawing it. And Later, Conley told me I only had like a .12 chance to draw the tag so I guess I was pretty lucky on it because I didn't even know how good it was so <clears throat> I was pretty stoked because we knew the punts got I've been hunting that every every few years for my whole life so but uh, we we ended up with the archery hunt um, and we'd been scouting up there by Tropic Reservoir up that way and I had my camper up there and spent quite a bit of time up there and um, I'd seen just tons and tons of probably 24, 26 inch bucks. Yeah. All over the place. And we caught wind of a big old buck. Oh, yeah, we found this big buck that is kind of a legend in the area. I guess some people had been watching it for a few years and it was a it was a big six by six and we guessed it would be probably over 200 inches. And I don't know how wide did we think it was. Probably 34. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's a big, big, big buck. So, <laughs> yeah. So we we caught wind of it, and we went there. We were lucky enough one night right before dusk to, uh, and Conley was actually with me. <clears throat> we spotted it feeding, but we only had about 20 minutes before it got too dark. And we were up on it. On yeah, it we were up. Big cliff. We had a, so he fell off the big cliff, and uh, I just started running at it. Uh, got up around it and, and then I got down there and I was so sweaty and so foggy that my no eyeglasses wedding. were all fogged up. So no I couldn't even sweaty. see through my see through my uh, my uh, glasses. But anyways, Conley was back up on the cliff so he was trying to he was talking me into it and uh, we got we got about I got about 150 yards from it, and then it kind of fed off, and I, and I lost a little bit. And then I came back around the corner and got up the top of it, but then it's getting so dark. And, and he was with another buck, a good buck. Yeah, probably like a 180 inch four point. With. But I had it, he came walking out in the, in the middle, and I was about 80, 85 yards away, and he was broadside. And I pulled back and realized that it wasn't him. So I could see his antlers and I watched him and I just could never get a shot at it. And then right at dusk, right when it was almost too, he, he, walked, he walked through the, um, an opening. And, uh, my heart was beating and I was sweating and I couldn't see and my shoes were off. And, and, uh, anyways, I, I, I missed him. And, and, uh, but that, that, was, that was a neat experience for me. That's just the rush of it. The, seeing such a big buck and you know we spent we spent I spent probably 20 days on the archery hunt hunting and I was passing buck after buck and it was just I ended up filming a ton and just having a having a blast but uh, like I said I I kept passing up so many bucks and I'm like what am I doing and, and when it got closer to the end of the archery hunt you know I I was still trying for that for the, the big one and there yeah. was another big one in there and I, and, uh, anyways, I never got I never got one on the archery hunt because I still knew I had the muzzle loader and the uh, rifle that I could hunt. And so everyone kept telling us, just wait, just wait, hold out, hold out, and everyone kept saying that. And uh, so we we held out for the muzzle loader, and uh, we had we went back to the place to hope we could find him the first day of the muzzle loader hunt. Yeah. And. Uh, we saw one deer. Yeah. Lo and behold, they were all—they all bugged out. Yeah. So, so then we started. Then I was a little bit panicky because <laughs> now, now 
I couldn't even find the, the 26 inch bucks, the four points that we were seeing all the time. And, and we had a, there was another three point that was probably 30 inches in there. And, and uh, I don't know. So we, we caught wind of where we might want to look. So we went to a different place. Yeah. So we kind of found a, uh, what they call kind of a migratory route that they come through and um, we found the area that they kind of came through. It's, it's pretty crazy. So I bet we saw probably a hundred bucks a day coming through this little route. And uh, they were all about the same size, right about that 160 mark, just not quite what we were looking for. And we hunted there for two or three days, just hoping that a big one would come through. And then I actually had to go home that day so I left him there by himself, and then so I don't really know the whole story of how it happened. But so I was getting a little frustrated, to be honest with you, because I couldn't. After so many, after seeing so many bucks and so many deer, like I kept thinking, is that a shooter? Is it not a shooter? And they started kind of blending together <laughs> to me, yeah. and and anyways, it ended up the the last day of the muzzleloader. Uh, I was I happened to be by myself that day. And uh, I spotted, first thing in the morning, I spotted about six or seven bucks, probably about a mile, a little over a mile away. And, yeah. and I, I looked at them for a while with my glasses and, and I could tell, I could really tell none of them were like just masked, like 30, nothing over 30, but I had a feeling that I had to walk into them. So, so I hiked into them and I sat there watching them for about a half hour, quite a few bucks. And, and then this guy, he he actually he looked up, and all I could see was this this left side of his antler, and I kept looking at it, and I'm like, what's going on there? Because it was a very big club, I could tell it was thick, and then I started counting more than just the four points that I've been looking at. And, and anyways, I, I knew it wasn't you know the 30 inch buck that we were after in in my mind the whole time, but I kept I probably watched it for about 50 minutes. Oh really? So almost an hour that you watched this bug. Yeah, and I, and I kept looking at him, and it's the last day of the muzzle, and and I've hunted the rifle at, on the Ponscon before, and and it's the rifle's a little hit and miss. Like we get into them sometimes, and sometimes we want it, and I was a little nervous. And so, anyways, I I get closer to him, and I get within about 180 yards of him, and, and I thought, and I think, you know what? This is a this is a cool looking buck. I'd be happy with the, with this buck. And uh, you know, I I, I knew it, I knew it wasn't the 30 incher. And, yeah. But I but anyways, I I loaded up and I, I went back and aimed at him. And he was beating broadside and everything was fine. And I shoot and he doesn't go down. <laughs> and I think, what just happened? And I'm like, maybe. So I just plain missed him. So. So I go to get my reload, and I realized I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> so, so I ended up just running back to my truck, probably about a little over a mile away, and got a reload and, and came back. And I'm like, you know what? If he's still there, then I'm, you know, I'm going to drop it for sure. And, and uh, I was lucky enough that he had only fed a ridge over in, in a little valley, and I got got into him, and I and I could see he was feeding up to the trees where I wouldn't be able to get a shot at him. But I, I crept up. Um, some of the other bucks that were with him were kind of looking at me, so I, oh, was, really? I was hoping that they wouldn't run on it, And he, but he wasn't. I got a little closer. I got about, about 160, and he was almost in the tree line, but I thought, I, I just got to be calm. I've already missed him once. So I laid my back, my back on the my backpack on the ground and got prone position and I was one I measured it off of 160 and did the did the math and right when he stepped into the tree line he had put one foot in and I thought this is it so I shoot and he goes straight down if he would have took one more step I wouldn't have got got a and then I went over to him and just the character on him and the thickness and, and I was pretty happy and I'd been hunting along probably almost 30, every day in uh, the archery Every day yeah. on the muzzle loader, so I've been out a long time, so so I put put some work into this guy, and oh yeah, that, and it, you know it, all, it was just a fun fun hunt. I was, you know, I I used to love hunting back when I was Connie's age, <laughs> and I still did, but I started 
to have kids and family and work and I kind of I kind of fell out of it a little bit but I think this kind of renewed my interest in it and 